This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nitsa Hone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. In Magic, each color has what Wizards of the Coast calls an iconic creature type. This refers to a creature type that generally doesn't appear in large numbers, represents what the color is about, and generally appears at higher rarities. For example, dragons are the red iconic creature type, and angels are the white iconic creature type. For blue, it's sphinxes. Unlike some of the other iconic creature types, like angels and dragons, it took quite a while for sphinxes to earn this distinction. In fact, before 2005, there was only a single Sphinx in existence, and it was a white one. However, starting with Ravnica that year, Sphinxes became more prominent within the game and quickly became the iconic creature type for blue. These days, we see at least one in pretty much every set, and there are a total of 74 of them. And in this video, we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. This is actually the second time I've looked at Sphinxes. I did it the last time in December of 2019, but the list is entirely different now with only one card in the same slot it was in last time and four complete newcomers on the list too. As usual in a video that updates an old MTG top 10, I'm also going to take a look at the Sphinxes that made the list last time, but didn't make it this time. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top eight is worth two points. This includes events like Pro Tours, and a second tier top eight is worth one point, and this includes events like Regional Championships. All right, let's take a look at the four Sphinxes that made the list last time, but didn't make it this time around. Starting with... Dream Eater, which was at number 10 last time. This six mana 4-3 Sphinx comes with flash and flying, and when it enters the battlefield, you surveil four and bounce a non-land permanent to your opponent's hand. Basically, it gives you a fairly imposing flying body that can load your graveyard, set up your draws better, and can bounce a problem permanent at instant speed. It never saw a ton of play in standard, but it was featured in some Grixis control decks while it was legal in the format. Next, there's Warrant Warden, which was at number 9 last time. This split card gives you a choice between two options. Warden is the important one for this list because it gives you a 4-4 Sphinx with Flying and Vigilance. Obviously, that's not the most efficient Sphinx these days, but the fact that the card can also be a removal spell called Warrant makes up for that. Warrant lets you put an attacking or blocking creature on the bottom of your opponent's library. It saw a bit of play in Jeskai Control decks in Standard, and more recently it managed to gain a point in a modern Valky Cascade deck. These decks look to abuse how Cascade used to work, which was that if you cascaded into Valky with something like Ardent Plea, you could choose to cast his super powerful Planeswalker side. To consistently cascade into Valky, your deck couldn't have any spells in it that cost two or less mana. And that could be a problem if you needed to remove a creature in the early game. Warrant Warden got around that because its mana value is higher than two, but you can still cast it as a two mana removal spell. Warrant Warden might have found some more consistent success in Modern, but the rules for Cascade were quickly changed so that you couldn't put this insane Planeswalker into play so easily, and Warrant Warden hasn't seen play anywhere since then. Next, there is Sharoom the Hegemon, which was at number 8 last time. This legendary artifact Sphinx is a 6-mana 5-5 flyer that reanimates an artifact from your graveyard. It gained its only two points at a standard Pro Tour, where it was featured in a graveyard-based artifact deck, which... Sharoom is obviously a perfect fit for. However, it's been a very long time since it's gained any points. The last of these Sphinxes to miss out on the list this time is Sphinx of Jwar Isle. This 6-mana 5-5 flyer comes with Shroud, and it lets you look at the top card of your library. Shroud means it can't be targeted by anything, and that made this large flyer a lot harder to deal with than your typical creature. It put up top 8s in standard and extended control decks, but it doesn't have any points since 2010. All right, with those four out of the way, let's take a look at the top 10 Sphinxes in Magic. At number 10, it is Sphinx of Clear Skies, which didn't even exist back in 2019. This 5-mana five 5-5 five, five flyer comes with Ward 2, and when it hits a player, you get a domain-based version of Fact or Fiction. In other words, you reveal the top X cards of your library, where X is the number of basic land types among lands you control, and your opponent divides those into two piles. 
You choose a pile and put it into your hand, and the other goes to the graveyard. So, in addition to being a big beater that can end the game in the sky, this Sphinx also gives you a ton of card advantage, especially in five-color decks, where the effect basically just is factor fiction. This makes the Sphinx pretty hard to beat if it is left alive, and Ward 2 makes it more challenging to kill than it would otherwise be. Despite being a relatively new card, the Sphinx has already seen play in multiple formats, including Standard, Pioneer, and Alchemy, and in all of them it sees play in four or five-color control decks. It's likely to gain more points in the future. At number 9, it is Sphinx of Lost Truths, which was at number 5 last time. This Sphinx is a 5-mana 3-5 flyer, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw 3 cards and discard 3 cards. You can also kick it for 1 generic and a blue, at which point you don't have to discard. Most of the decks that have played it aren't actually that interested in kicking it, though, because those decks could take advantage of cards in their graveyard. In Standard, it was played alongside Sharoom the Hegemon, providing you with a way to load up your graveyard with powerful artifacts. It was also played alongside Sphinx of Jwar Isle in Bant mid-range decks. Extended was where the Sphinx could really be abused, though, because you could combine it with Dredge to dump a bunch of your library into your graveyard, which was exactly what those decks wanted to do. You could use every draw from the Sphinx to Dredge and then discard more cards that you wanted in your graveyard. These days, there seem to be more effective ways to load up your graveyard than paying 5 mana, and as a result, the Sphinx hasn't seen play anywhere since 2010, and it probably won't be able to stay on the list in the long run. At number 8, it is Prognostic Sphinx, which took quite the tumble from its number 2 spot on the last list. This 5-mana 3-5 flyer scries 3 when it attacks. You can also discard a card to give it Hexproof until end of turn and tap it. Those two things together made Prognostic Sphinx a pretty attractive control deck win condition in both block and standard. It made sure you continued to draw whatever you needed to to keep your opponent at bay, and in the meantime, it could attack for three damage at a time while avoiding most removal spells. One important thing to note that is a common mistake, tapping the Sphinx here is not part of the cost to give it Hexproof, so you can give it Hexproof whether or not it is tapped, and that's pretty important. In block, it was played in Sultai control decks, and in standard, it was played in blue, black, and Jeskai control decks. It hasn't gained any points since rotating out of standard, though, causing it to fall so far down the list. At number 7, it is Consecrated Sphinx, which was easily dethroned from the number 1 spot it held last time. This 6-mana 4-6 Sphinx has flying, and whenever an opponent draws a card, you get to draw 2 cards. This means that at a minimum, you'll be drawing 1 card on your turn and then 2 on your opponent's turn. Even though the Sphinx is expensive and vulnerable, it doesn't have Shroud or Hexproof like some of the others we've seen, your opponent is basically never going to be able to trade profitably with it, since it will net you 2 cards before your opponent ever has a chance to kill it in most cases. The ability to draw you tons of cards and serve as a win condition all on its own allowed Consecrated Sphinx to find success in multiple formats, but it found the most in Standard, where it was played in several control decks. It even has some points in Vintage, a format with lots of cheap card draw. Even though EDH doesn't matter for this type of MTG Top 10, I do have to mention how heavily played the Sphinx is there, where its draw ability is even more absurd since if you're playing with multiple opponents, you will find yourself drawing even more cards. Still, it's been several years since this Sphinx has gained points in 60 card formats, and that's why it fell 6 spots over the last 3.5 years. At number 6, it is Sphinx of the Final Word, which was at number 4 last time. This 7-mana 5-5 Sphinx has flying and hexproof, can't be countered, and it makes it so your instants and sorceries can't be countered. The Sphinx has been a great win condition for control decks in both Pioneer and Standard. This is especially true in Control Mirrors, where whichever control player can get the Sphinx into play first is likely to win because they now have the upper hand, since the player who controls the Sphinx could still use counter magic while the other player couldn't. It has also seen significant sideboard play in Pioneer Lotus Field decks, which can quickly ramp into the Sphinx. The deck's also pretty reliant on having instants and sorceries resolve, and it can make sure that happens. It hasn't been completely idle since 2019, gaining 15 points, all of them in Pioneer, but it wasn't enough to keep up with several of the other Sphinxes on the list. It does look like it will sporadically keep gaining points in Pioneer, though, which bodes well for its future. At number 5, it is Sphinx of Foresight, which has moved up one spot since 2019. This 4-mana four 4-4 four Flying Sphinx scries one at the beginning of your upkeep. It also happens to be one of a handful of cards that has an effect before the game really starts, as you can reveal it in your opening hand to scry 3. That's a pretty good way to make sure your first few turns go exactly the way you want them to. 
It also makes it a lot easier to avoid mulliganing, as Scry 3 can really improve what your opening hand looks like. It has generally been played in decks that are really reliant on one particular card because it's so good at making sure you find it. For example, in Standard it saw play in Fires of Invention decks, and the rest of its points have come in Vintage Bizarre Aggro decks, which really can't get going the way they want to without getting Bizarre of Baghdad in play on turn one. The fact that the Sphinx effectively lets you dig 10 cards deep into your library goes a long way towards making sure that happens. The Sphinx is well positioned to keep gaining points in Vintage. At number four, it is Curator of Mysteries, which didn't make the list last time. While it did exist, it had yet to gain any points. It's a four mana 4-4 four, four flyer that allows you to scry every time you discard or cycle a card, and it has cycling for one blue mana. Starting in 2020, it began to see play in Modern Living Index, where it's gained all of its points. These decks specialize in cycling creatures away to find a card with Cascade, then you cast the Cascade card and you always hit Living End, at which point all the creatures you cycled away get reanimated and any creature your opponents have in play die. The fact it can cycle for only a single blue mana works great in the deck, and if you ever fail to win the game as a result of Living End, you can cycle some more while scrying to try and find a way to get there. It's going to keep gaining points in Modern going forward. At number three, it is Sphinx of the Steel Wind, which is the only card on the list that occupies the exact same spot it had last time. In a vacuum, it's probably the strongest Sphinx in the game. After all, it's a 6-6 flyer that comes with a slew of keyword abilities, flying, first strike, vigilance, lifelink, and protection from red and green. All of that makes it incredibly formidable, because it can pressure the opponent while remaining on defense, and it's incredibly difficult to block. The fact it has protection from red and green is no small thing either, because that means the Sphinx doesn't die to a lot of commonly played artifact removal. The downside here, of course, is that the Sphinx costs a whopping 8 mana, but the decks that have played it over the years don't ever actually pay that. Instead, they look to reanimate it or otherwise cheat it into play. That prohibitive mana cost kept it from seeing play in block or standard, and it even only has a single point in modern, but it has found a ton of success in the Eternal formats, where you have access to the most powerful ways to get around ever paying for the Sphinx. In Legacy, for example, it's been put into play with Show and Tell, Goblin Welder, and Animate Dead. It sees the most play in Vintage, though, where it's fairly common to put into play with Tinker. The Sphinx has been especially active over the last few years, where its protection from green became even more valuable following the printing of Force of Vigor. The Sphinx is likely to keep gaining points going forward, and it may end up having the most staying power of any Sphinx on the list, so it may come out on top in the long run. For now, though, it's behind two other cards, including the number two card, which is... Dream Trawler, which didn't even exist back in 2019. We've seen some oppressive control deck win conditions on this list, and this might be the most oppressive of the bunch. It's a 6 mana, 3 5 with flying and lifelink. It gets plus 1 plus 0 when you draw a card. When it attacks, you draw a card, and you can discard a card to give it hexproof and tap it. Because it draws you a card when it attacks, it is usually attacking at least as a 4 5, and the extra draw also gives you more fuel to continue to give the trawler hexproof. Basically, it does everything a control mage loves. It's hard to kill, it can win the game in the air while gaining you life, and it draws you cards. It was heavily featured in control decks in standard, and it has continued to be a factor in Pioneer control decks too. It even has one point from a Legacy Reanimator deck, though that hasn't gone on to be a long-term home for the Trawler. It will keep gaining points in Pioneer in the future, but it does feel like Sphinx of the Steel Wind is destined to pass it. And at number one, it is Rafine Scheming Seer, which didn't even exist back in 2019. She was printed quite recently in 2022's Streets of New Capenna, but she still managed to come out on top of this list. And fairly comfortably too. Rafine costs one of each Esper mana and gives you a 1-4 with flying in Ward 1. Additionally, any time you attack, you get to connive X, where X is the number of attacking creatures you control. This means you get to loot X times, and if you discard a non-land to any of those loots, you put that many counters on attacking creature. This means Rafine can come down on turn 3, you can send in an attacker, and immediately get the value train rolling. She has quickly gained a lot of points, especially in Standard, largely because she slots into so many different decks, whether they be straightforward Esper midrange or aggro decks, or decks focused on using tons of legendary creatures alongside Plaza of Heroes. In Pioneer, she's seen play in similar decks, as well as in Grease Fang decks, which look to combo Grease Fang with Parhelion 2, and Rafine's Connive can help set that up. 
Basically, what Rafine can do is really powerful and she's cheap enough to slot into a wide variety of decks. She has a ton of time left in standard and she is likely to gain many more points, but so far she hasn't really caught on significantly in any other formats. So those are the top 10 Sphinxes in Magic. If you want to own any of these powerful creatures, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to make sure you stay aware of future videos, subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you want to catch up on the over 600 other MTG Top 10s, including many more that look at creature types, you should see the playlist on your screen shortly. Lastly, if you want to go the extra mile in supporting me and the channel, you can do so by becoming a patron or a channel member. You can find ways to do those things in the description. Thanks for watching.